this MCQ, mind you, is the truest representation of something which I call in my lectures as vertical integration. Not only I connected anatomy to orthopedics, but we applied that in the form of a wonderful example of this MCQ. A 26-year-old male has been complaining of back pain for last one year. The pain radiates from back to the right buttock and thigh down to the legs. There's some radiculopathy. On examination, there is a mild sensory loss over dorsum of the foot, a very relevant point and weakness of extension of the great toe on the right side side well doesn't matter so they have given you technically as of now a history of backache for some time with radiculopathy with a sensory involvement over dorsum of foot and motor involvement extension of the great toe now the question says that which of the following is the most probable diagnosis and they've given you the different diagnosis of prolapse intervertebral disc now how to sort it up see first of all i want you people to know that when we talk about the dermatomes you have to understand it like this that this portion is basically what do you call as groin which has a sensory supply by l1 this portion is basically anterior thigh which has a sensory supply by L2. This portion is anterior knee, which has a sensory supply by the dermatome L3. Now, if I take this further, then the grade 2, then 2nd, 3rd, 4th and 5th, then this portion, you know, this portion, which is the medial leg you can say or medial ankle you can say or even the medial border of foot you can say is supplied by the dermatome l4 if you look at this portion you know i can maybe show it to you like this so if you look at this portion which is the okay i, I write it here which is the lateral leg lateral ankle or maybe even the lateral border of the foot that is supplied by the dermatome s1 what is left l5 so dorsum if if we include this part you know this part particularly so this is the dorsum of the foot <coughs> which is supplied by the dermatome l5 so what i'm trying to tell you is that if you really get a question like this you will never be able to come to the conclusion of the diagnosis either of the nerve root involved or the level of disc prolapse unless and until you don't have the basic knowledge of anatomy of sensory dermatomes similarly when we talk about myotomes i do not advise to remember all but at least i advise to remember l4 is a myotome for ankle dorsi flexors and I'm sure you all know that ankle dorsiflexion is tibialis anterior. Okay, I'm not writing it all though here. L5 is a myotome for extensor hallucius longus. S1 is a myotome for ankle plantar flexor, which is tendoaculus, you know, which is a combination of gastrocnemius and solia. So this basic knowledge of dermatome and myotome is compulsory. Now, if you look at the question, you have come to the conclusion that there is a mild sensory loss over dorsum of the foot. If you have your basic knowledge, then you are aware that dorsum of the foot has got a sensory supply by L5. If you look at the motor component, there is weakness of extension of the great toe. What does that mean? EHL. The job of EHL is to extend the great toe. EHL is again L5. So technically in this question, we have come to the conclusion, technically in this question, we have come to the conclusion that which nerve root is involved? L5. We have come to the conclusion that which nerve root is involved? L5. Now, which level of disc is involved? 
we'll come to that only once we know the basic types of disc flaps so let's now in the same slide try to understand types of pivd now when we talk about types of pivd there are three types of pivd the first type of pivd that i want you to remember today is called as posterior central pivd posterior central disc flaps okay we'll make it simple for you this is l4 body this is l5 body okay you have this intervertebral disc now of course what you're looking at right now is the 2d imagine if it is the 3d then you have something behind l4 and l5 okay i'm drawing it here you have something which is behind l4 l5 what do you think is behind l4 l5 don't say spinal cord it is corda equina why do i say corda equina because everybody knows that spinal cord has already ended at lower border of l1 or upper border of l2 okay so you have you don't have cord you have corda now from corda equina before i go further i have to tell you from corda equina you have the right and the left transverse nerve roots which are spinal nerves so from corda equina you will see a, a spinal nerve coming out on the right and left side i will just make it on one side no point in making on both the sides let's say there is l4 spinal root so this is l4 spinal root which is coming out of the corda equina it goes horizontally of course but the more important point is that after reaching a particular point it turns down vertically after turning down vertically it usually crosses a foramina neural foramina neural foramina is the place after which a spinal nerve becomes a peripheral nerve so this nerve root of l4 this nerve root of l4 will now become a peripheral nerve from a spinal nerve and it will go down to whatever right side or the left side the root is and it will go down to the limb as per the dermatome and the myotome that we have agreed okay na now i am not saying this this is human anatomy that the spinal nerve which will arise distal will travel less horizontal will turn vertically down will cross the neural foramina and will become the peripheral nerve so this will become l5 now again i am not saying this it is human anatomy that the spinal nerve which will arise even more distally will travel less horizontally you know the pattern is like this pattern as i mean any key so this will travel less horizontally it will turn down it will cross the neural foramina and it will become the peripheral nerve it will be s1 do you understand this now let's see the disc flaps what is the first type of disc flaps this is type 1 which i have mentioned posterior central prolapse so that means that this intervertebral disc has to prolapse posteriorly because the most common direction of prolapse is posterior but then what is the second word center so this nucleus pulposus which is a jelly like material surrounded by annulus fibrosus annulus fibrosus is a tough structure the name itself says fibrosus so nucleus pulposus will prolapse from annulus fibrosus it will prolapse posteriorly but centrally and it will come and straight away involve what corda equina so in posterior central prolapse you will never have involvement of an adjacent nerve root rather than you will have involvement of corda equina therefore you will have your patient directly coming to you in corda equina syndrome and everybody knows that in corda equina syndrome you have two s one is called as saddle anesthesia and the second one thing that you have is called as sphincter disturbances which means no voluntary control over defecation or urination fine this is the first type of prolapse i would say that it is the least common the worst prognosis for sure but least common iska prognosis kharab hai aur ye least common bhi hai what is the second direction of prolapse that i want you to see the second direction of prolapse is basically posterior listen to me carefully the second direction of prolapse is basically posterior lateral now what do you mean by posterior lateral let me show it to you this is basically posterior lateral prolapse all right so this is the second type of prolapse which i have to write it here which is posterior lateral prolapse now posterior lateral prolapse of course i will write it down don't worry posterior lateral prolapse is also called as paracentral prolapse see you have to understand it why 
I have written it is posterior lateral PIVD, but what is more important is that it is paracentral PIVD. Why do I say paracentral? Because it is adjacent to center. I'm sure you have seen what is the center called equina. It is adjacent to center. So this is paracentral prolapse or posterior lateral prolapse, and believe me, it is the most common type of disc prolapse. <clears throat> Believe me, it is the most common type of disc flaps. Now, which nerve root is involved? The right nerve root or the left nerve root? But that's not important. What is important is that which level of nerve root is involved. See, we have to make a generalization. What is the level of disc flaps here? Come on, tell me. What is the level of disc flaps here? L4, L5. What is the nerve root involved in front of your eyes? L5. The posterior lateral or paracentral prolapse is involving the nucleus pulposus comes at and engulfs the nerve root. Which nerve root? L5. So if the disc prolapse is L4, L5, if the level of disc prolapse is L4, L5 and the nerve root involved is L5, I have given you an example. So that kind of gives us a concept that it is always the lower level of nerve root which is involved. So in a prolapse of L4, L5, the nerve root which is involved will be is L5. So, this is a generalization that whenever there is a posterior lateral or a paracentral prolapse, the nerve root involved will be at a lower level. Let's say, for example, if the level of disc was L3, L4, then nerve root would have been involved was L4. Is that clear? Now, let's take a look at the third type of prolapse here. The third type of prolapse that I want all of you to understand is not posterior central, not posterior lateral. This is far away from center. I'll show it to you. This is far away from center. So you have nucleus pulposus here. So this prolapse is your type 1, posterior central prolapse. This prolapse is your type 2, posterior lateral paracentral prolapse. This prolapse is your type 3, far lateral or foraminal prolapse. We will make it simple. First of all, we have to understand why do we call it far lateral? Because it is far lateral from the center because it is far lateral from the center the second one is that it is also called as foraminal prolapse because it is straight away going and involving the foramina it is straight away going and involving the foramina through which the nerve root passes through which the nerve root passes now which nerve root do you think has been involved in this l4 Again, a generalization. If the level of disc prolapse is L4, L5 in far lateral prolapse or in foraminal prolapse, whenever the disc goes there, what is the level of nerve root which is involved? It is usually the upper level nerve root. So, what have I explained here is that if the level of disc prolapse was L4, L5 in the far lateral prolapse, you saw the involvement of L4. So, that gives you a kind of a generalization that the nerve root will be involved will always be upper level. Let's say for example, if the level of disc prolapse far lateral or foraminal was L3, L4, then the nerve root would have been involved, would have been L3. I hope it makes some sense to all of you. Now, if you have gathered this much information, okay, if you have gathered this much information, now we can solve the question, okay, first of all, what is the nerve root involved? L5. Is me quick confusion. What is the level of nerve root involved? L5. Now, in L4, L5, posterior lateral or paracentral prolapse, we will think about it. What is the level of nerve root involved? Okay, we'll make it simple. In posterior lateral or paracentral prolapse, today we concluded that the level of nerve root involved will be lower. In L4, L5, what is lower? L5. Okay, let's not get the correct answer. Let's solve the options first. If the level of disc prolapse is L5, S1 with a posterior central prolapse, Dude, posterior central prolapse at any level has to give you corda equina syndrome, which will come to you with saddle anesthesia and sphincter disturbances, the two S. Do they mention anything like that in your question? No. So, it cannot be the answer. Now, PIVD L4, L5, far lateral or foraminal. So, think about it. Far lateral prolapse will involve which nerve root? Upper level. L4, L5, what is the upper level? L4. So, answer will be L4. I mean, this option means L4. PIVD L5, S1, posterior lateral or paracentral. Everybody knows that in posterior lateral paracentral prolapse, what is the nerve root involved? Lower level. In L5, S1, what is lower level? S1. Now, in the question, our diagnosis was L5. Here it is S1, so it doesn't match. Here it is L4, it doesn't match. Here it is Cordepina, so it doesn't match. Here L5 matches to L5, so answer has to be L5, answer has to be A.
I hope you got the gist of how to come to the conclusion of the level of dysplapse from the clinical examination of the patient with the basic knowledge of anatomy. This MCQ, mind you, is the truest representation of something which I call in my lectures as vertical integration. Not only I connected anatomy to orthopedics, but we applied that in the form of a wonderful example of this MCQ. I hope this helps you all.